Um, hi everyone, um, my name is Steph and I'm an iOS engineer um, at a consulting company called Odyssey here in Melbourne. Um, and today I'm going to talk to you about designing for animation. And um, like I said, I'm an engineer, I'm not a designer, um, but I'm going to be talking about design today, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm going to be doing um, quite a few demos throughout this talk. The idea is it'll be really practical. Um, and so I just want to mention that all the resources, um, all the prototypes that I'm going to be doing and the videos that I'm going to show are all up um, on that link. Um, and I'll show it again at the end as well. So I think with prototyping, um, especially with um, prototyping animation, it's really a good idea to download the files, have a play around with it yourself um, if you're interested, because um, that's really a good way to learn. So why animate? Um, that's kind of why I'm doing this talk, and I'm going to, um, I've chosen four key points um, to talk about today, and different reasons that I think are um, particularly relevant um, when looking at animation for mobile apps. So the first one is to keep the user oriented. And this is really around looking at how we can use animation in transitions um, to help the user understand what's happening um, as we flow from screen to screen in our app. The second point we're going to look at is how to direct user attention with animation. Um, and there's a few different areas we're going to look at here, like directing attention towards a specific um, part of the screen. Um, and then there's other techniques, like directing user attention away from something or distracting them from something that's happening in the background. So we're going to look at a few different areas under that. The third point we're going to look at is how we can connect behavior with animation. And this is really about um, gestures and giving the user the feeling that they're in uh, direct control of what's actually happening on screen. And last point is we're going to look at how to communicate personality with animation. And at this point, I'm going to give um, a few examples of apps and products that I think do this really well, um, just to give you an idea of um, products out there that are doing it really well, because I know you can also um, really uh, do this point badly as well. So I probably should introduce that the app that we're going to be prototyping today and testing out um, some of these different animation techniques on. And so in the spirit of um, DevWorld 2015, I've created a brand new weather app called Delightful Weather. And this is the app that we're going to be prototyping today. Um, it's based on the Apple Weather app, so it's going to look fairly similar to Apple Weather. Um, but we're going to be trying out um, a few of these different animation techniques um, on this app today. So why even bother prototyping animation? Um, there was a really great um, WWDC session this year um, called Designing with Animation. And the presenter there, um, I think, described it in a way that I really liked. Um, he said that screenshots show you too little. Um, if you're only looking at static designs, then you've really got no idea um, how it's actually going to feel to flow through your app and um, navigate through. So that's not really going to help us out when we're thinking about um, animation. But we could go and design and develop a fully working app to test out our animations in, but then that really shows us too much. We've got too many decisions we need to make when we're designing a functioning app that really get in the way of trying lots of different animations and seeing what works and throwing out the ones that don't. So the solution is to make little animated experiments, otherwise known as prototypes, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So when you start to look at prototyping, um, it can be a little bit overwhelming if you haven't really uh, looked at it before because there are so many tools out there. Um, these are just kind of a snapshot of a few of the ones that I've seen, um, I've worked with, or um, even just heard of, and there's new prototyping tools um, being released all the time. So I'm just going to talk through a few of them here. And some of them are more appropriate when we're prototyping animation um, than others. Um, so one that I've used um, very early on in the prototyping process is called POP. It stands for prototyping on paper, so it's really good when you've got um, rough sketches or mock-ups and things like that, that you just kind of want to get a really initial feel for how the app and the flow of your app is going to work. Um, not so appropriate when we're looking at uh, prototyping animation. Then we kind of move on to tools like um, Flinto and Envision and Proto.io, and they're good when you've maybe got some basic designs to work with and you're playing around with um, some transitions or basic animations. Not uh, so good, again, when you're dealing with custom animations. They start to um, show up a few limitations. So we can look at some more um, complex um, prototyping tools. So there's ones up there like Form, um, Quartz Composer, um, that are sort of node-based prototyping tools, which I found um, perhaps not quite as appropriate coming from um, the fact that I'm an engineer and not a designer. Um, I've been leaning more towards tools like uh, Framer, which uses CoffeeScript, and even um, Xcode storyboards sometimes. So um, as you probably guessed if you've read the talk description, I'm not actually going to be using any of those today. Um, we're going to be prototyping in Keynote. And I actually do this quite a bit, um, and I'm quite fond of it because 
it is perhaps a little bit underestimated. It's not a prototyping tool, um, obviously, but you can do quite a lot, um, especially with custom animations, and do it really quickly as well. So I'm actually going to be doing some um, Keynote prototyping today, um, just to kind of show you how quickly um, you can build up prototypes in Keynote um, and get a basic idea of how animations might feel. So the first point we're going to look at is how to keep the user oriented with animation. And like I said, this is really about looking at um, transitions and how can we can use animation effectively in transitions to help the user understand what's going on when we're changing the screens around on them. And a good principle when we're thinking about um, navigation in apps is that users should always know where they are, where they came from, and how to get back. And I think animation can really help with that. So there's lots of different examples of this um, throughout iOS. Um, one particular example that you're probably all familiar with is in the calendar app. And so this shows um, some kind of trust, uh, custom sort of zoom and scale uh, animation when you're moving between the year view to the month view to the day view. And so it really gives the user a sense of where they are in terms of time in the app um, and helps them kind of understand what's going on between the transitions. So that's probably um, one you're all familiar with. Another one that I really like is the Duolingo app. And Duolingo is a language learning um, platform. And they use animations quite subtly throughout their app um, to help the user sort of transition between the different uh, language lessons. And so this is an animation um, from Duolingo that I particularly like. And they use things like animating the um, background of the icon to fill the screen. Um, the icon moves into position, and all of the other fields come in um, towards the icon as well. So this kind of idea, or this sort of animation, is called consistent choreography. And I think Duolingo uses this quite effectively um, to help the user um, transition between their list of language lessons into a specific um, lesson. Um, another example, this time from the web, is from Stripe Checkout. And now Stripe Checkout have a web payment form um, that has a Remember Me checkbox. And so this uh, checkbox, when the user ticks it, um, the form expands down to accommodate this uh, mobile phone field in there. And this is really obvious that um, the field is a direct result of what the user's actually done, and there's no transition off to another screen that kind of disorients the user. They know exactly how they got to that state um, in the payment form. So that's a couple of examples of how um, some other apps are using animations to help keep the user oriented. Um, but how are we going to do that in our weather app? And how are we even going to prototype in Keynote at all? So I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to start up a new Keynote document. And I'm going to set up some basic links and transitions and get us started. Um, then I'm going to look at refining these transitions and um, maybe make them a little bit better at keeping the user oriented. So I'll do that now. So I'm going to start from scratch, and I'm going to open up a new Keynote file. And you can see um, immediately that it's not the right size. We want it to be an iPhone size. So I'm going to go up to the document inspector on the right-hand side here. I'm going to change the slide size to a custom size. So I'm just going to change that to the size of an iPhone 6. And now we've got our iPhone screen. Um, now what I've done is... I've created some screenshots um, for our delightful weather app, and I'm just going to drag them straight in um, as images. So I'm going to open up my screenshots here. And I'm just going to drag them um, straight into the left-hand side here. And Keynote's going to um, nicely put all of our images on separate slides, um, so we've got them all ready to link up there. And now I can just delete this one here that it's added in. And now we've got our slides ready to um, link up. But if we play this now, um, these slides would all just transition as they normally would um, if you're doing a regular um, keynote presentation. So we want to change this so that you actually have to click in certain areas of the screen to move on to the next slide. And we can do this with the presentation type on the right-hand side here. So we can change that to um, a couple of different options here. The first one is links only. And the second one is self-playing. And we're going to uh, do examples of both of those today. Uh, but I'm going to select links only to begin with. And so that means that we have to now add links to our slides to actually make them transition. They're not going to do it themselves. Um, so let's do that now. 
What I normally do when I'm adding links is I just create a shape to attach a link to, because um, that means I can make it any size I want and I can copy and paste it across the screens. So I'm going to add a square in, and I'm just going to position it over these different cells here. I'm going to get rid of the border here as well. So now I've got a square over our uh, Melbourne cell, and I'm going to add a link to it. So if I right click, I've got an option here to add a link, and immediately it pops up and it links it to the next slide. Now I could leave it linked to the next slide, because um, that works in our case, um, but the problem with that is if we if I go and add another slide in between slide one and slide two, my link's going to get all messed up. Um, so I usually like to specify the actual slide number. Um, so then if I go and add another slide in now, um, the links are going to update and it's going to be attached to the right slide still. So I'm just going to copy and paste this link down the screen. Don't have to be too precise here. And I'm going to update these links to match the appropriate slides. Okay, so now if I play this now, we can see we can click, click on um, any of these cells here and it's going to take us to the right slide. Um, but then we can see immediately that once we get to this slide, we can't get back to our menu, so we need to fix that too. And again, I can do that by just copy and pasting a link um, onto this slide here. I'm going to put it over this little sort of down uh, arrow for our menu. I'm going to adjust the slide number again. And then because I've set it to a specific slide instead of just, for example, saying previous slide, um, I can copy and paste this onto all of our other pages and they're all going to point to the right slide. So now if I press play there again, um, I can go to my weather forecast and then I can navigate back to my menu. So now I've got my basic links set up. And that's all looking good, um, but I don't have any transitions. There's no animations going on there yet. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. And Keynote has um, quite a few different animation uh, options that you can add to the different slides. So you can simulate most of the default um, iOS transitions, things like pushes and modal present and dismiss and things like that. Um, so we could just use uh, a default type animation to give, a, give us like a starting feel for how it's going to look. Um, so, for example, we might want to do um, a modal present when we, um, when we tap on one of these menu items. So I'm going to do that now. And you can see if I have the, um, the slide selected here, and then I go over to the Animate Inspector, which is the middle button on the right-hand side, it says No Transition Effect. And so that's where we can add, um, add our animations. So I'm going to add a Move In animation. And this is going to become like our modal um, transition. So I'm going to change the direction from bottom to top. And I'm going to reduce the duration there as well. So if I preview that, now we're kind of getting our modal transition. And so that's going to be applied to whenever we click any link on this slide and it goes to any other slide. So that's going to work for all of our other, um, all of our cells here, but we need to also apply the transition in the opposite direction to get back. So I'm just going to select all of my slides here and I'm going to add an effect to all of them um, called reveal. And so that's going to give us the um, opposite to what our move in was. So I'm going to select the direction top to bottom. And again, I'm going to reduce the duration down. And if I preview that, we've got our sort of modal dismiss type um, transition. So now if I play this again, you can see we've got our modal show and our modal dismiss. And so that's looking a little bit better. Um, it's still not great. The user kind of has a sense, a little bit of a sense of depth of where they are um, in the app. But I think we can do a little bit better because if we look here, we actually have a title, an icon, and a current temperature that also appear on this slide here. So I think we can do something with that. So I'm actually going to open up one I've prepared earlier now. Um, and I'll talk through what the changes are here. The main difference is I haven't just dragged in full screens from this one. I've actually gone through and laid out each of the different elements. And I've done that because I want to actually animate each of those objects individually. Um, and so I've just sort of gone through and laid them all out. Everything else is the same as what we've just done. Um, we've still got all of the links in here um, and all of the slides are exactly the same. So the only thing we've changed is just we've separated up the images. And the reason we've done that is because we want to use a transition um, called Magic Move. 
And Magic Move, um, if you've done any kind of animation before, it works um, in a similar kind of way um, if you think of your slides as keyframes in an animation. So it's going to try and interpolate um, an object's position or color or size um, from one slide to the next. And it's going to do a lot of that hard work in the animation for you without you having to animate um, all the individual objects on a slide. So you'll notice, if I zoom out a little bit, the other thing I've done is I've actually taken each of these uh, table cells on our menu and I've added them into all of my other slides here. And so I've done this because Magic Move can also uh, work on anything that you've got off the screen as well. And so this is a really nice way to sort of transition objects off the screen. Um, as long as you've got them on both slides, it'll sort of work um, even if the object isn't actually within the, um, the bounds of the slide. So I'm going to add this Magic Move transition to all of my slides by selecting them all in the left-hand side here and then adding the transition effect. So again, I'm going to reduce the duration down a bit. And I'm going to leave my acceleration here to ease in, ease out. Um, but you can play around with these. Um, so for example, I might perhaps say on my menu, I um, want to change the acceleration. Um, but I might leave it the same on all the others. So now we've got Magic Move applied to all these slides. Um, so it's going to do a lot of the hard work of animating all those individual objects for me. So if I play this now and click on one of these cells, you can see that the title, the icon, and the, um, the current temperature are all sort of moved in um, from their position in the menu. And so I think maybe that's doing a little bit better of a job of keeping the user oriented um, through these transitions um, because there is sort of some, some, some consistency going on. So that's kind of where I'm going to leave this for now, um, but we'll come back to it shortly. Okay, so like I said, um, I just designed up some really basic screens uh, for this prototype. Um, I did it in Sketch, um, but like I said, I'm not a designer, and a lot of the time I just uh, create these prototypes directly in Keynote. Um, so you can't, you can't even design these screens just with simple shapes and colors and images and that sort of thing um, directly in Keynote, and that's perfectly fine too. So you don't have to uh, have all the design tools at your disposal um, to be able to do this kind of thing. So the second point that I want to look at today is directing user attention. And like I mentioned before, there's a few different aspects to this. Um, the three main ones that I want to sort of pull out today are that you can direct user attention towards an action. And this is sort of focusing a user or prompting them to interact with some uh, UI element on the screen. The next one is directing them towards the result of an action. And this is about giving feedback to the input that they've provided. And the last one is directing user attention away from something. And this is about distracting users from perhaps something that you don't want them to notice that's going on. So again, there's lots of examples of this um, in iOS. The first one we're going to look at is focusing a user towards a UI element. And so here are a couple of obvious examples in iOS. Um, alerts are probably the most obvious. Um, you really have to pay attention to them and interact with them, so you really don't have a choice in that one. Um, Another one that's perhaps a little bit more subtle is the um, FaceTime or personal hotspot banners that you get um, when you've got that active, active on your phone. And so that's more subtle, but again, it's more continuous as well. So it's constantly there um, prompting you to tap on it and go back to wherever it is that you can turn off that feature that you've got on. Another obvious example of this is the um, slide to unlock animation on the iPhone. Um, this is an interesting one because it not only directs your attention towards that, but it also gives you a hint as to how you're meant to interact with that UI element as well. So obviously, um, the animation is moving in the direction that you're meant to swipe to unlock your phone. So that goes, I guess, one step further than just directing your attention towards that spot on the screen. Now, directing your attention for feedback, um, the most obvious example of this is button presses. And so this is just a simple example I pulled from the, um, the Pinterest iOS app. And so, with button presses, it's a really good idea to perhaps add a little bit of animation to really make it clear to the user that they've engaged that button or that they're interacting with something and you've changed something. So I think maybe that this wouldn't be quite so effective if it didn't have the animation, if it just changed color, um, especially because it's a tiny little button um, in a navigation um, bar. So I think it just kind of, it's, it's a good idea for um, giving user feedback that their action actually did something. 
And the last point that I want to look at um, under directing user attention is distraction. And this is an interesting one. Um, and a good example that I found of this uh, is the Stripe checkout again and their verification code. So this is an example. Um, if you can see the animation down the bottom there, it gives you a spinner um, and it tells you that they've sent you an SMS verification code. And the interesting thing about this is it's entirely an illusion. Stripe actually have no idea when you're going to receive the SMS, but they've already distracted you for a couple of seconds. So chances are you will have received the SMS or you'll get it really soon. So this is an example of using distraction to help your app feel faster than it really is and to distract the user away from something that's happening in the background perhaps that you have no control over. So how are we going to use this technique of distraction or directing attention um, in our weather app? Something that I thought perhaps could be useful to the user is if there's a weather warning or something like that, we want them to immediately notice that there's some uh, warning or notification that they need to pay attention to. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to add an icon to our app that's going to have a little bit of animation to draw user attention if there's a weather warning um, in that city, for example. And to do that, we're going to use um, a different feature in Keynote called Build Animations. So again, um, here's what I prepared earlier. But the only change um, between what we were just looking at before and this one here is I've just added this little icon up in here for a weather warning. Now, we might decide by putting that in that that's enough, that we don't actually need any animation there. Um, but we're prototyping, right? So we can try this out quickly and see if we like it um, and see what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and add an animation to this icon. And you'll notice that if I select the icon, our animation inspector on the right-hand side here changes. And so now it's giving us all the different options available to add animations to specific objects on our screen. So I'm going to choose an action that I want to add to this icon, and I'm going to choose a pop. And so that's just going to make it bounce a little bit to hopefully make it a little bit more noticeable to the user. I'm going to make it get a little bit bigger and preview that. Cool. So if I play this now, it's not actually going to work because Keynote's going to want to wait until I tap on the screen to show that animation, which is not what we want. We want it to play that animation as soon as you get to that slide so that the user notices it. So I'm going to go down to the bottom here where um, there's a button called Build Order, and that's where we can sequence all of our animations on an individual slide. So this brings up our palette here with all the animations on the slide. And at the moment, we've only got the one. Um, but you can see down the bottom here that we can change when it starts. So we're going to make it start after our transition. And we're going to give it just a slight delay so that the user has a chance to get themselves oriented on that screen um, before we start moving things around on them. Great. So now if we play this now, and we click on New York, you can see it's just got a little pop when it goes there. So we can decide maybe we like this, maybe we don't. Um, but it was really quick to just kind of try it out and see, does this kind of icon need an animation? We'll see. So that's where we're going to leave our prototype again. And we're going to look at the next point, which is connecting behavior. And this is really about gestures. It's about giving the user the feeling that they are in control of what's happening on screen and that they're able to directly manipulate the content in your app. And I think Probably the best example that I can think of that um, in iOS apps is the uh, iOS app called Clear. And now it's a, um, a to-do list app. This is just a snippet from their, um, their website. And they use gestures for everything. Um, they use swipes and dragging and pinching. Um, even for their navigation, you pinch to close your list and go up a level in the navigation. So, it's really quite effective um, at giving the user the feeling that they're directly manipulating all of the content that they've got on screen. And so how do we do that in Keynote? We've currently got a prototype that has links, and the only thing we can do with links is tap on them. So how are we going to communicate gestures like swiping and dragging and paging and things like that? Um, well, we can't really do that with a links prototype, but there is another type of, type of prototype that we can do in Keynote that helps us to communicate what our gestures and interactions might look like. And that's called a self-playing prototype. And that's what we're going to do now. So 
So now this is myself playing prototype, and there's just a few little things that I've changed um, from our Lynx prototype. I went to the document inspector on the right hand side here again, and I changed our presentation type to self playing. And so this means that instead of having to click on a link to transition between slides, our slides are just going to automatically keep transitioning one after another until it, reach, it reaches the end. And so what we need to do then is we need to add some kind of animation on each of the slides so that Keynote knows it needs to go through each of those animation steps before it moves on to the next slide. And that's where we can uh, communicate our gestures through these animations. And so you'll notice here that I have this little grey dot. And this is what we're going to use to communicate our gestures. This little dot is going to be on each of the different slides. And we're going to give it animations to indicate things like taps or paging or scrolling. So if I open up my build order palette here, you can see that this little dot has three different animations attached to it. It's going to fade in, it's going to move down over our Stockholm cell here, and then it's going to disappear. And so that's going to give us a feeling that we've just tapped on that cell. And then because Keynote has gone through each of those animations in that build order palette there, it then knows it needs to go on to the next slide. And so it's going to keep transitioning through each of these different slides, executing the animations and then moving on to the next. And so that's how we're going to communicate our gestures. And so you can see here, I have added a couple of extra slides um, in this sequence here, just to give you an idea of what things like scrolling um, will look like and paging as well. So if I play this now, um, you can see it kind of walks through a scenario in the app um, to show gestures like scrolling and panning and swiping and things like that. So that's our self-playing prototype. That kind of gives us a feel for what it would be like to interact with the app. Um, but the great thing about this is um, you can actually export it as a video and perhaps send it to your developers or your client or something like that to give them for a feel for how it would work as well. So if I go up here and go to export, I've got a number of different options, but I can choose QuickTime. And if I export to QuickTime and hit next, it's going to ask me to save a movie file. And so then Keynote's going to go through and run that sequence again and convert it into a movie file for us. So then now I should have this file on my desktop. And I can send that um, off to whoever I need to um, to give them a feel for what it would be like to interact with our app. So that's a really handy thing that, um, that I use quite a lot. Okay, so that was our self-playing prototype. The last point that we're going to look at today is how to communicate personality um, with animation. And so I have a couple of examples here of apps or products that I think use um, this concept really, really well. And one of them is MailChimp. MailChimp is an email marketing platform um, where you can create email newsletters that you send out to a list of subscribers. And they use um, animation quite a lot in their products. And MailChimp have quite a fun um, and playful type personality. Um, this is their mascot, who is a, fre uh, a chimp named Freddy, and he appears um, sort of throughout the uh, process of sending an email newsletter. So this is one example of an animation that they use right when you're about to hit send um, on your email newsletter. So when you hover over the send button, the animation triggers and the monkey arm starts to sweat, and it kind of introduces uh, a little bit of humour at a step where you're actually a little bit anxious because you're, you're thinking, should I really send this newsletter? Have I checked for spelling mistakes or are the links correct? And things like that. So it is good to sort of lighten the mood right at that point where the, the user might be a little bit anxious. And then when you send the newsletter, you get a high five from Freddie. And these sort of couple of animations right at a critical part um, of the flow in the product um, really do reflect the brand's personality and they also help, help you create a better email newsletter as well because they make you stop and think. Another example um, of an iOS app that uses animation for personality that um, I really like is a puzzle game called Dots. And um, as you'll see from their uh, promotional video, they have a very colourful and fun and playful personality and their animations really reflect this. Um, they use these sort of bouncy and over-exaggerated over animations all throughout their app, um, not just in the game itself, 
but in their buttons, in their menus, in their transitions. Um, it's all, all very consistent and it helps to sort of reinforce this fun and playful personality. The last one I want to show um, is this little animation um, in the Google Inbox iOS app. And this is what you'll see um, when you reach Inbox Zero, um, which I've never actually seen it in the app. I never get to Inbox Zero. <laughs> but apparently it's there. And um, so when I saw this, um, I, I actually saw this on Dribbble. And I thought, okay, well, maybe this is a good example for what we can do to add some personality to our delightful weather app. Maybe we can animate the weather icons because weather's not stationary, right? Um, so I went ahead and I did that. I created some animated weather icons and I thought, all right, I'll have a play around and I'll see what I can do. I did run into a few limitations in Keynote. Um, this probably looks a little bit lame coming straight after the uh, Google Inbox one, but that's okay, we're prototyping. We can try it out, we can see if we even want anima animated icons. Uh, maybe we don't, maybe it kind of takes away from the uh, simple feel of it. So jury's out on that one. Um, but I created these couple of animations because I wanted to show a couple of little tricks that um, I use in Keynote uh, when I'm prototyping quite a bit. Um, one that I learned recently is that when you create a move animation to move an object from point A to point B, you don't actually have to move it in a straight line. You can add points to that um, path and you can move it in any kind, of, uh, any kind of path that you want. So little cloud there moves in sort of a bit of a wavy pattern. I don't know if they really do that, but <laughs> mine does. Um, the other one that is um, quite good that I use a lot is the wipe um, build in action. And I use that to simulate drawing lines. Um, so for example, I've seen it used before um, in prototypes for like GPS um, map type apps when you want to draw a um, path from A to B. Um, so you can choose this wipe um, action and you can select the direction. Um, so I chose top right to bottom left. And so it gives the feeling it's like drawing in um, the lines. So that's all for communicating personality. Um, let's recap on the four points that we've done. We looked at keeping the user oriented, and that was really around um, transitions. We looked at directing user attention, connecting behavior with gestures, and communicating personality. Now, I've just got a few resources um, that I'd like to share if you're interested in learning more about this. Um, like I mentioned before, there was a really great um, session from WWDC this year um, called Designing with Animation. And it was actually a follow-on from one in the previous year called Prototyping Fake It Till You Make It. And that one was um, really focused on prototyping in Keynote to get user feedback and iterate on that really quickly. Um, so they were really interesting. Um, you did also did a really great talk at DevWorld last year um, on prototyping, and she talked about prototyping in Keynote as well. <laughs> um, and I think probably one of the best ways to learn about prototyping in Keynote is to actually download prototypes that other people have done and play around with them and see how that they've achieved different things. So these are a couple of examples that I've really played around with a lot and I learned a lot from. Um, somebody's recreated Google's material design promotional video entirely in Keynote and it's really quite impressive. Um, and they actually do a lot of it with Magic Move as well. So um, the links are all in the resources in the slides. Um, and I definitely recommend having a look at that one. Another one that's really interesting um, was created by Linda Dong, who I think until quite recently uh, worked on the prototyping team at Apple. And she's created this little kind of animated motion graphic, I think she called it in Keynote, that plays around with a lot of the different build type animations that you can use. And it's, uh, it's a bit of fun as well, so that's worth checking out. So all of those resources, um, all of my Keynote files that I use today um, are all up at that link, so feel free to download them and play around with them. Um, and yeah, let me know if you've got any questions. Thank you.